So we have 15 seconds. Uh, I'll dance a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about interviewing because it's something I'm super passionate about. I was really happy we had a talk this morning about recruiting because with a great recruiter, you can build a great team. And so I have a very particular set of skills. And part of that is because we were 35 people when I got to Puppet, and now we're 470. And I've done more than 200 interviews face-to-face, -face, and that doesn't count screening and all that other junk that goes with recruiting and finding the right people. I'm Mike Stonkey. I'm a director of engineering at Puppet. You should follow me on Twitter. That's Stanma, and Matt Stratton's been pimping that all week, and I'm pretty happy about that. I wrote a book a while back. I started the Apple Project, um, and again, I work at Puppet. So the first thing you need to do to interview is to dole out responsibilities to a team. You should have six, eight, ten people doing interviews, and they should all be there for a different reason. They need to find out why that candidate's there, what do you need out of that candidate, what makes them successful, and every person needs to be digging into a different area. We also use a tool called a scorecard and a job description. Scorecard is internal. I want to know what the outcomes are for hiring somebody. Why do I need this person in my organization? The job description goes outbound. It's just stuff like, hey, you need to have X number of years doing blah, 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 blah. Turns out I don't actually care if you have those number of years. I care that you can do the thing I need you to do. And that's what that scorecard is. And everybody on the interview team needs to get together and know about that scorecard and kind of understand it and be able to say, here's the parts I'm digging in for. Now, when you do a technical interview, don't ask dumb questions. I don't care how many piano tuners there are in New York City. I don't care why manhole covers around. I do care that you can do actualwork.com. So get together with your team and pair on a problem, do a bug, find something to work on that's real. And then you get to culture, and people say, I want to measure culture. Culture is not about hanging out. If I can drink with you, that doesn't have anything to do with culture. If I can hang out with you, those are friends. You can find friends, you don't need to interview them. What you should do is find somebody that works the way you want to work. Do they solve problems the way you need to solve problems? Do they share your values you have as a team or as a company? I like transparency above everything else, just about. And so if you're not a great communicator and not open about everything, if you want to keep things close to the vest, you're not going to be on my team. And I am totally OK with that. So don't hire somebody to do a job they've already done. They'll leave or they'll get bored. And they won't be happy. Make them stretch a little bit. Get them into the next thing that makes them just a little better. One thing I really try to find out is, do they have 10 years experience, or do they have one year experience 10 times? This is something you'll dig into with a technical interview during the actual work.com pairing. So you should try and dig in and have your technical people say, yeah, this person actually was learning for 10 years straight. Or no, they kind of didn't. Um, have people done great things, or have they stood next to someone who did great things? If people say we a lot during interviews, you need to find out, are they always good at trying to really give credit where credit's due, or are they just standing close to somebody else who kind of did some awesome, awesome stuff? Uh, I also want to know. What do you want out of this job that you're not getting currently? What fulfills you? What motivation do you have? Why do you want to come talk to me about Puppet? I don't, I mean, I want to know that so much to start with. That can be a 10 minute conversation. My only technical question I usually ask is what's difficult about distributed systems? That can be a 10 or 15 minute conversation. It can be 10 or 15 seconds, depending on who you are. And I like conversational interviews versus like question, answer, question, answer. So the more conversational, the better, usually. I also don't want somebody who just obeys orders constantly, because sometimes we have very stupid process, and it needs to be challenged. So I like to tell you, tell me about a time you stood up to your manager. Tell me about a time you said, we're not shipping this bull crap. Tell me about a time you did something else. And then I also like to know, what drives you? Tell me something you're proud of that you've worked on. Sometimes people pull up something from their home infrastructure, or their drone, or like stuff they're doing at home. Sometimes it's about a massive project they've rolled out at web scale, and it's great. I love to hear about it no matter what. When you're interviewing, you get a few different types of candidates. The talker, the guy who won't shut up and actually tells you nothing. Um, you get the one word answer. This is the person who's like, yes, no, I have done that. Mm -hmm. Those interviews go very long and they're not very fun. Afterwards, the six, eight people get together gladiator style. We vote yes or no. And then we go around the room and talk about it. And we have a discussion. And one no doesn't necessarily override a yes, or one yes doesn't override a no. It's still a discussion. Remember, those six or eight people are there evaluating on different criteria. And the interview should also get a rating, not just the candidate. How well did you do with that interview? This is how you get better. You have to figure out what went wrong in this interview. What was this candidate cheated out of? Why did we suck at this interview sometimes? Because sometimes you do. So in a quick summary here, 
You basically need to be able to dig, dig deep, and that means like keep asking questions to find the answers of what you need, because sometimes they just stay really shallow. Do a group vote, rate your own interview, hold a retrospective on it, and trust your gut. The few times I've gone against my gut, I will say that I have definitely regretted it. Sometimes your gut just means good things when you're interviewing. And please prepare. Those people have come in and tried really hard to be a great candidate for you. The recruiters have worked their butts off to get them there. Please prepare for your interview. Don't just walk in and read the resume across the table. Thanks. Yes. <laughs>